people have never, ever, ever heard of Matt Mayberry before this morning? That hurts the ego. The NFL does not stand for the National Football League. The average career is three years. I knew right then and there because I went to Northwestern Medical. I knew that they had a decision to make. And the Chicago Bears decided, hey, this is a rookie. We don't owe him a whole lot of money. $375,000 of an annual salary, the rookie minimum at the point. So they gave me an injury settlement, which is a nice way of cutting a player. Lost my dream in the blink of an eye. I was depressed, even thought about suicide. I had my dream and vision even set out as to how I wanted to end my life because I couldn't imagine going through another day thinking about another hardship, another failure. Becoming a transformational leader is welcoming the uncertainty. It's welcoming change. Change in the industry, change in the marketplace, change in the team environment, change in everything that you do. As a transformational leader, we don't have to like change but you have to be willing to adapt to change and thrive within that change because every single transformational leader does that. You know, you can lay out all the X's and O's and all the strategies and the culture and the team building exercises and everything. That's all dandy and it's it's needed. But the best of the best, the most dominant organizations in the world, they are obsessed with human potential and growth and they look to grow the individual before they ever look to grow the practice or business. Transformational leadership, the building blocks to becoming a game-changing leader. And my time in the NFL as an athlete is which 1% of the population gets the opportunity to make it to that level. It's the best of the best from all over the country. And now in the business world, meeting with some of the most extraordinary leaders, innovative leaders, changing the world. The one resemblance that they all have, the the, the common theme they all share is that transformational leaders are obsessed with growing themselves because they fully understand that they cannot grow their team, they can't grow their dental practice until they grow themselves. Out of all the other scholarship offers I had, I had 19 scholarship offers. But I went to Indiana, met a man by Terry Hepner. And I'll never forget when I met with him, he said, Matt, if you come to Indiana, you're going to get an opportunity to play in the NFL. But more importantly, you're going to be more successful outside of the game of football than you ever will be in the game of football. And I knew right then and there that I wasn't just a piece of meat that was making the university multi-millions of dollars. That was a leader, a transformational leader that cared about me as a human being. And that brings me to my next point. If you want to become a transformational leader, love more, serve more, care more. Love more, Serve more and care more. Every interaction with your team, everything that you do, every team meeting, every patient that you see throughout the day, love more, serve more, care more. That has nothing to do with the strategies and X's and O's of being a business leader, of being the building and being the best version of yourself, building the best practice. That is just just the essence of what leadership is. The greatest leaders in the world are full of empathy. And they do those three things better than everyone else. Love more, serve more, care more. Everything that you do, write that down in your office, carry that in a note card, everything that you do. Look at that before every meeting, every phone call, every patient interaction. Love more, serve more, care more. That's what Terry Hepner taught me. He also taught me another valuable lesson that I think will be very helpful for everyone in this room about how to build a fantastic and world-class culture. You know, because culture, people think you need 300,000 employees. That's not true. You can still have a phenomenal and thriving culture with four people, with five people, six people, whatever that looks like in your practice. But it consists of this one thing as a transformational leader. Number one, you have to believe the vision that you have for your practice. You have to believe it. And it sounds so cliche, so simple, but I can promise you this, that if you as a leader do not fully immerse yourself into that vision as to what you want that practice to consist of, no one else will buy into it. Nobody else will buy into it. And when I first got to Indiana, Terry Hepner, we won three games the year prior before he came to Indiana. And this was the most enthusiastic, passionate man on campus. And he walked around everywhere talking to students, talking to parents, talking to basketball players, anyone he could talk about, come to the game at Memorial Stadium the next year. I can promise you this. You'll be entertained. You'll have a lot of fun. And most importantly, we're going to win one day. We're going to be at the Rose Bowl. We're going to be a very reputable team in the Big Ten. We're going to make a difference. 
We won three games the year before. I mean, that's a transformational leader to take a vision that he had for the football program, and he was so passionate about it, and he believed it with every fiber within his being. Number two, demand it. As a leader, you have to demand the vision, the culture that you want to set forth within your practice. You have to demand it. What that means is you don't got to be rude about it. You don't got to be disrespectful about it. But what you do have to do is you got to have every interaction, you got to talk about that vision. You have to talk with every single team member, with every single patient. These are the values that we stand for as a practice. This is what we do. This is what we're all about. This is our vision. This is where we're going. This is how we want to be known in the marketplace. You demand it. When you bring on new staff, they have to know that that is what is required of them. It's non-negotiable. Of course there's different personality, different personalities, and everyone deals with things differently, but as a leader, that's your job to find out how everyone interacts with different interactions and different situations that arise within that workplace. But at the end of the day, you can still demand a culture and the vision that you set forth within that practice. And it's vitally important in order to get to where you want to go. Three, sell it. Every day, sell it. Every interaction with the team, every patient that you do, sell that vision, sell that dream, sell that culture that you want to instill within that organization. Those are the three culture-building characteristics that I learned from that man, Terry Hepner, who passed away my sophomore year in college due to a brain tumor. It crushed my life, and my life was never the same again. But everything I know about becoming a transformational leader is directly related to that man, Terry Hepner. And those are three things about what I learned about building a great culture that I now see in the business world. One of the biggest success hacks in the world is being intentional about hanging around people who are doing it at a higher level than you. Whether that's a mentor, whether that's a colleague, whether that's somebody in a completely different industry, whatever that is, the more you can hang around leaders and people that are going to help you to elevate your game, that's going to force you to grow, get out of your comfort zone, and become the best version of yourself. If you want to take your game from where it is to where you want it to go, if you want to radically tr create transformational breakthroughs that are not only going to do wonderful and phenomenal things for you on a personal, but also professional level, you have to do this one important thing, and it starts here. Take full and complete responsibility for your life. Take full and complete responsibility for your life. And what I mean by that is that we have so many people, you turn on the news or you engage in conversation with some of your friends, you talk to a friend you haven't talked to in 10 years, whatever it may be. So many people in the world want to play the blame game, I call it. They point the blame at everyone else instead of looking at the fact that leaders, transformational leaders, never, ever, ever point blame. Even if it's someone else's fault, they'll communicate that with them but then they'll say, I'm the leader, I'll take it from here, this is what you can expect from me. Every single day from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, you make choices. The choices you make are either gonna get to where you wanna go or where you don't wanna go. Where you are right now is a direct correlation and refl reflection of your past choices. So you wanna change your life, change your habits, change your choices. Quickest way to create breakthroughs. You can't always control the events in your life. But what you can control, and what every single one of us in this auditorium has the power to do, is we control that R. The R factor consists of how you respond to events in your life, whether it's positive, never get too high, always be thankful. Humility and humble are two of the top key characteristics of transformational leaders. So you never, ever get too high when things are going great. You never get too low when things are going bad. Why? Because most of the time, is what you'll hear when I share the rest of my story, your biggest breakthrough is usually right beyond your biggest heartbreak.